Hey everybody, my name is Elizabeth Brakuyapa, but a lot of you know me as a Sabia on campus. And I'm the co-founder of Everything Disposable Express, which is the reason why we are here today. I will be taking you through the design thinking and entrepreneurship topics that were relevant to my business. So I'll just give you a quick profile of myself. Like I said, my name is Elizabeth Brakuyapa. And I'm class of 2024 studying business administration at Ashesi University. And I'm currently an intern at the CPA unit. Quick, let's do a quick run through of the table of contents before we continue. So first of all, we'll start with the problem scope and I'll talk a little bit more about how I decided to come up with this business in the first place. And then we'll talk about some of the design thinking frameworks that I went through. We'll talk about the business idea and lastly, we'll go through some of the challenges that I had and the impact that having this business had on me. So let's start with the problem scope. Basically, I decided to start this business because I realized that on campus there was a lack of disposable items and then there wasn't much variety between the disposable items that were available on campus, campus being the Ashesi community. And it was a very high cost for people to go to town and get these disposables. Unless, of course, you're already going and then you decided to get them on your way. But I realized that it might be more convenient if students could quickly access these disposables on campus. And it would be even better for them to have variety, which gave me um, decent, which made me decent competition with some of our businesses like Essentials. So... Some of, the dates, um, some of the design thinking frameworks that I went through, one of them was the mind map where I de identified the problem being the lack of disposables and variety in the HSC community. Then I also identified that there was a high cost for most people, which would give me a competitive advantage because mine would be significantly cheaper than taking a taxi, going all the way to Kabinia, then paying for an Uber, going all the way to Accra, buying it from East Ligon or wherever, and then paying all the way to come back, especially if it was an emergency. And then, which this high cost also discouraged students from going in the first place. So that is where Everything Disposable Express was born. To get an idea of the kind of things that I should bring to campus. Initially, I had targeted students and student businesses. So I sent out surveys and conducted interviews with some people that I knew who might have an interest. So basically, they were stakeholders. For the surveys, I posted them on my social media handles and asked students who were interested to respond. I got quite a few responses about the, the sizes, as in how many pieces should be in a pack, the kind of colors they were interested in, whether I wanted the paper or plastic. For the interviews I conducted, I sat down with them and I was like, what are you interested in? How would you benefit from this? How would you benefit from this? And I got a lot of valuable information that helped inform my stock. So then let's just quickly move on to the business idea. To give more detail about the business idea, as I've said many times before, it was simply to bring disposables in. But then, as you go along, your ideas might change. So I realized shortly after, like the first two weeks, that maybe targeting student businesses was not the best because they required um, a constant supply, which my new business was not ready for. And so I had to modify my idea and modify my target market, moving from students and student businesses to students and maybe the ASC and school departments because that was, a bet that was better suited for me because they didn't have regular events, so meaning they did not need a constant supply, which would help me develop my business more in time to hopefully market to Ashesi student businesses later in the future. And as for marketing, I focused mainly on Snapchat and WhatsApp in the beginning because that's where my target market mostly was. I was marketing to people on my social media platforms and I was marketing to my school year group. But then as I went on, again, as your business idea changes, you realize that there are more things you can do and adapt with your business. It doesn't have to be the same. So I, real what did I, I realized that not everybody looks at the WhatsApp page. 
I also realized that I don't have that big of a following. So I started appealing to the ASC. You know, I feel that the forms that allowed them to post my stuff on their platforms so that more people would see it. I sent emails. I realized that the, there was a disconnect between the, on, the off-campus students and the on-campus students. So for on-campus marketing, I had to do more of word of mouth telling people to tell someone to tell someone. I had to send my flyers out to the different departments and actually speak to some of the heads of departments and their assistants to get the word out there. And it has improved the number of customers I get weekly, which is showing improvement. You know, like my business idea is growing. (laughs) Yes. So you have to be very adaptable. You have to have a lot of interactions. I started with the lean method, you know. I didn't have everything all at once. I had, I got what I had and then I built from it. And I can honestly say that the products I carry now are very similar and very different in a lot of ways, as in they cater more to my target market than when I started, thanks to the research and all the mind mapping and, and constant interviewing and serving that I was doing. And not all of this has to be formal, right? Sometimes, just take a step back, go outside and ask people, you know, what do you think of this? Oh, you do this and this. What, 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 what would help you do this business? What would help you get going with this? And from there, you know, take that information and apply it to your business. I guarantee you it helps. Lastly, we have challenges encountered. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing, the first thing that... Um, I went through personally was keeping track of financial records because financial accounting was never my strong suit and so I was I was overwhelmed with this task like should I use an excel sheet how should I record this which goes where my I even I remember getting advice from my father he was like write this in blue and write this in red and it was very very daunting but then one thing you should know is that take it a step at a time I got two small books, one for my costs and then one for my sales. And every time, obviously, I make a sale, I write it in the sales book. Every time I, have, I spend something on my business, I write it in the costs. At the end of the day, you come and compare it, and then you see if you've made a profit or not. The next challenge was not having enough supply to meet demand. As mentioned previously, the reason why I had to change my business idea a bit is because back then, my my supply chain i'll use supply chain if that's the best term was not fully formed in a sense that i wasn't able to get a continuous supply when i needed it now i have improved i've found a support system my sometimes you actually do need a support system a lot of people believe that when you're going in business you have to go in alone otherwise someone can steal your idea but what you don't realize is that other people depend on you just as much as you depend on other people. And so look for those people and then form a kind of partnership with them and that would help you. Sometimes you have to be open and honest with your clients that you cannot get this at this specific date. You have to ask them, you have to ask me or tell me a week in advance or three days in advance. And if you cannot fulfill the order, be honest with them. Because when you try to trick your clients or deceive your clients it ruins the trust that you build with them and then the next time you do have a supply they won't even believe you and believe you me that's worse for your business then finally the last and probably the biggest was the transport cost just as transport was high for other students it was also high for me the beauty of it is that now as your customer base grows You get to buy more, you buy in bulk, you can actually put some stock down. And that's saved on my transport cost because I I didn't have to go out as much. So yeah, as your business grows, things get better for you, economies of scale. Yes. Oh, there's one more. (laughs) Sorry. Lastly, lastly, number five, the impact that this business has had on me as a person. I gained... A lot of entrepreneurial skills that allowed me to manage my business better when I started everything disposable express I wasn't the most confident in myself in terms of managing a business you know when you come to a you see a lot of students who've already started businesses in high school or people just 
straight from the jump they have like three businesses and you're wondering to yourself oh my gosh can i do this am i capable of running a business and that's how i felt i felt like i did not have the entrepreneurial drive but then once again i always say take it one step at a time over the period i realized yeah i do not have maybe the same excitement or bigger but i'm doing it you know Practice makes perfect. Every day you learn something new on the job. You learn how to handle customers. You learn how to handle suppliers. You learn how to take care of your stock. You learn how to record. You don't necessarily need to have this ingrown ability. Just apply what you learned. Have the heart for it because business is not easy. And then just keep going. And then the second impact it's had is that it's taught me not only how to manage a business and put up structures to kind of like curb all the challenges in the business but also how to curb challenges in my own life for example i have 8 a.m's and i don't like waking up early but then i know okay if i sleep at this time i wake up at this time so even though the challenge of not waking up early is still there i still know how to manage it because you have to be disciplined to manage your business and discipline is something that is built internally and so one of those, one of the, those are some of the impacts that this has had on me. If there's anything I would want to advise people is that, you know, you don't get it right the first time. It's only very, very talented people that do an amazing job the first time. A lot of us have to learn and grow, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you feel like you have to change your idea, change your idea. But just don't lose focus of your end goal. And I hope this helps you in your design thinking journey, in your business journey. And thank you for having me.